Welcome to Vet Zone, where passion for animals, science, and medicine lives. Karenia, why everyone hates you. The name Karen comes from the Greek word for pure. Pure what, though, can be interpreted. In the case of Karenia brevis, the purity of a wanton destruction applies. Like other dinoflagellates, Karenia bears attributes of both plants and animals within a compact single cell. In the 1800s, dinoflagellates were described as animalcules, a name that imparts both wonder and whimsy. Not surprising, since the English naturalist Henry Baker discovered that some animalcules held the power of bioluminescence. I imagine him staring lazily from his wooden ship on a warm summer night, marveling that life had turned the dark sea a glowing blue. Karenia doesn't do anything beautiful. When she enters into a coast in full bloom, she stains the water a rusty red, the color of old blood on cement. We sometimes call Karenia brevis growth expansion a red tide, but scientists typically prefer the term harmful algal bloom, HAB. Harmful algal blooms include many different dangerous organisms, and for an overview, listen to the podcast, Harmful Algal Blooms. What makes Karenia so deadly are the poisons she brews. Collectively named brevitoxin, literally brief toxin, they bind to sodium channels on our nerve cells, leading quickly to neurologic and gastrointestinal signs. These toxins are beautifully perfect, or if you don't cackle over cauldron, deviously terrifying. Brevitoxins bear no taste, odor, or color. Being both heat and acid stable, you can cook it all you want, and they will still be there to kill you in the delicate white wine clam sauce. We can't blame Karenia alone, though. There are over 20 different species of dinoflagellates that produce phycotoxins the term for these marine biotoxins. Depending upon the toxin's clinical effects, medicine classifies them. Karenia causes the syndrome known as neurotoxic shellfish poisoning. As the name implies, it's typically associated with shellfish, like clams and oysters. Remember that the purpose of these tasty little bivalves is water filtration. Within just six hours of phycotoxin exposure, an oyster filters and collects enough toxins to make a human or pet sick. For this reason, amateur shellfish collection bears risk if you don't know what you're doing. Letting your dog eat what it finds on the beach is risky too. You don't have to eat the toxin to be affected by it. If you swim through it, the toxin can penetrate your skin. Also, swimming or just being near these harmful algal blooms leads to inhalation of the toxins. Luckily for pets and people, we can walk away from the ocean and can typically survive a single dose of brevitoxin. Beyond making you think twice about an oyster bar, there typically are no lasting effects. For aquatic life, such as fish, dolphins, and manatees, they cannot get away from these toxins, and harmful algal blooms can destroy local coast life. NOAA, the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration noted that harmful algal blooms have been reported in every U.S. coastal state and that their occurrence may be on the rise. Global climate disruption may be affecting the frequency, duration, and distribution of these blooms. On August 13, 2018, Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency. The current red algal bloom of Karenia brevis extends over 130 miles of Florida's west coast and has killed millions of fish, 12 dolphins, more than 500 manatees and 300 turtles, and a whale shark in addition to other aquatic and avian life. The stench of death permeates the coast and has been one of the worst blooms in recent history. Florida annually has this tide, but it's rare to cause such devastation. Research continues to look for effective, safe methods to combat harmful algal blooms. The Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota has developed an ozone treatment system to purify saltwater, but large-scale solutions remain elusive. So avoid red tide areas. 
Remember that this toxin can be inhaled, so keep a strict distance. Do not consume recreationally harvested shellfish during a red tide. And as a general rule, don't let your pet eat any treasures from the sea that have washed ashore. Typically, filleted fish are safe, as brevitoxins don't accumulate in the mussel. Fish that are found dead or dying should not be eaten, whether you fillet it or not. Although I would hope that this last point was obvious. At myvetzone.com, the link to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is attached so that you can learn more about Florida's red tide. And if you wish to donate to the Moat Marine Laboratory, we've included a link to them as well. Thank you for listening. <music>